So today, guys, we're going to be working on the research project for this unit. So if you go to Google Classroom, okay, you will see that it is both in the stream and in the coursework tab, okay, entitled Toxin Project. Um, so in there, uh, you've got the PDF, which is what I'm going to be going through. It's the outline for the project. And there are also two files. One is a Google Slides and one is a Google Doc. Okay, that's because you have a choice here. You can either do this presentation, do this as a presentation in Google uh, Slides, or you can do it as a report in Google Docs. You will not be presenting to the class either way. Okay, this is just something being handed in to me. It's just what format do you prefer? All right, so you can choose whichever one you choose to do. Please delete the other. Okay, otherwise, when you hand it in, I have to figure out which one it is. Okay. And sometimes people have written stuff in both. And then I'm like, oh, is it supposed to be this one I mark or the other one I mark? And then I kind of get confused. Okay, so whichever one you're going to do, keep that. Whichever one you're not going to do, delete it. Now, here's my suggestion. Don't delete the Google Doc if you decide to do the presentation until after you've done all of the typing. Because there's a word count minimum for this project. And it won't do a word count slides. It will only do a word count in docs. So you might want to type all your stuff in docs, get the word count, put it over in your slides, and then delete the Google Doc. That's fine. Okay? Or something along those lines. Okay? But the Google Doc is the only place you'll get the word count. Now, um, let's go through this. So the purpose of this is for you to examine the long, the effect of long-term exposure to a chemical. It kind of goes back to you know chemical and physical properties, the stuff we were talking about last week. Okay? So this includes obviously the health effects of the chemical on the people exposed, but also societal costs. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. And in terms of societal costs, I don't mean necessarily a dollar figure. Okay? So I'm not looking for you to go out and find out that crystal methamphetamine um, costs society uh, you know, $55 million in you know, health care and policing and you know, incarceration and whatever. Okay? I'm not looking for enough. Okay? I'm looking for you to identify places where society might be affected by this particular chemical. Okay? That's what I mean by cost. So I am not, not looking for a dollar figure. Okay? The problem with finding that is you might get information from the United States, you might get information from Europe and all the different currencies. Okay? It's all handled differently from country to country, so we don't need a dollar figure. Okay? So societal costs include things that society pays for or that affect people who are not under, or ex under the influence of or exposed to the chemical. So health care is an example. Okay? Obviously, someone who's exposed to a toxin is at some point going to have to go to the hospital. Okay? Who pays for hospitals? Taxes. Yes. Okay? One of the two certainties. Death and taxes. Okay? Taxes is one of the things that pays for health care. Right? Um, so if the health care system is being used more often, okay, it's going to cost more. And then our taxes could go up. Okay, so anything that draws on the healthcare system okay, is indirectly affecting you and I because we pay taxes. Right? Now, in Canada, we believe, and I think rightly so, that we should take care of each other. And that's why we have publicly funded healthcare. Okay? It means that if I get sick, I don't have to worry about not only being sick, but also being financially ruined because I have to go to the hospital. Okay? In places that don't have publicly funded healthcare, that's a real concern. Okay? If you don't have publicly funded health care and you don't have health insurance in some places and you end up in the hospital, we're talking thousands of dollars a day in some cases for time spent, treatment, etc. Okay? That can add up pretty quickly. Right? So we believe that in Canada, no one should be on the hook for that personally. Okay? That if you're sick, we should take care of each other. Okay? That's how Canadians think. Okay? Uh, so, health care. That means we're going to have to pay for that. Okay? Taxation, government regulations. Maybe the government has a regulation on how much of this chemical is allowed to be in certain places, like possibly water or food, or um, maybe you have to be a certain age to acquire it or something like that. Okay? So there could be regulations on 
Okay. Um, other societal, uh, societal costs, the impacts of people using or being exposed to this chemical. If it's a drug, okay, and it impairs their judgment, or it's addictive or something like that, okay, behavioral costs become a, another effect on society. Okay? And that means that maybe they end up in jail. Well, who pays for jail? Me and you. And taxes. Okay? Um, maybe the societal cost is a little more direct. Like someone who is addicted to something uh, needs their fix, and I just happen to be walking by, and I have a wallet that has money in it. So they mug me, and I am injured. I'm now also without all my money, okay, and whatever. That's a societal cost. I wasn't the person that was using the drugs, but I'm affected by it, okay? Those are the kinds of societal costs that we're looking for. Does that sort of make sense? All right, so addiction, treatment, emotional impact, et cetera. So the scope of the paper goes beyond just what does this stuff do to you, okay? It's also how does it affect everyone else? And obviously, we also wanna know about the chemical itself, okay? Is it ionic, is it molecular? Um, you know, is, is it addictive? What does it do in the body, okay? Does it trigger certain responses in the brain or whatever, okay? Like talk about what it does in particular. Okay, uh, so some suggestions for your project could be health hazards due to excessive consumption of alcohol, nicotine, or other drugs, exposure to toxic substances. Okay, that could be like, this is kind of a joke, but mercury and amalgam dental fillings. You guys probably don't have any of these, but we used to get metal fillings. Okay, they were silver, I have one. Okay, um, and there was this scam that went on in the early 2000s uh, where dentists were telling people that the mercury that was in their amalgam fillings was slowly poisoning them. Okay, and so they would have they would remove the fillings and put in the ceramic ones, the ones that people use now. Okay, and they made a ton of money, but it was a fraud. There's more mercury in a can of tuna than there is in a dental fill, and mercury is only a problem if it gets in your bloodstream. The mercury doesn't come out of my filling. My filling is not dissolving slowly over time. It was a total sham, and they made tons of money fraudulently and ended up going to jail for it. Um, so. Is mercury hazardous? Yes, it is. Can it get into water and food? Yes, it can. Okay, it's something that certainly we could be worried about. Okay, radon buildup in homes is another concern. Okay, lots of newer homes are built with a special pipe that can absorb radon okay, and keep it out of the house. So, those are just some ideas. Okay, environmental concerns related to handling, storage, disposal of heavy metals, strong acids, flammable gases, the transport of toxic chemicals, whatever. Okay, or any other topic you have interest in. Just know that whatever toxin you pick needs to be chemically toxic, okay? So um, uranium is not chemically toxic. It is radiologically toxic. That means it's radioactive, not poisonous, okay? Um, similarly, um, COVID-19 is biologically toxic. It is not chemically toxic, okay? Um, and I'm looking for, in particular here, toxic chemicals. So I've had people, they do this whole project and it's all about marijuana, but marijuana is a plant. <coughs> it's the chemical in the plant, okay, that we would be looking for, so THC, okay? That's what we would be looking for for the project. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm actually looking for the chemical itself. <coughs> All right, so in this project, you need to report on the chemical nature of your toxin. Okay, so what type of chemical it is, ionic, molecular, organic. Um, how is its structure related to its toxicity? So what about the molecule makes it behave in a toxic fashion? How does it cause damage to human tissue? What are its toxic effects? And what are the symptoms that the victim may exhibit? Okay, so this, that's half of your report. The other half is the stuff we just talked about. Okay, and that's the societal effects. Okay, so this project essentially has two parts. Talk about the chemical, and then talk about its effect on society. Those should be equally or nearly equally weighted. Okay, there's a real tendency for people to weight one or the other significantly more. Okay, most of the time it's this stuff that's easy to find, and then there's like two sentences about how it's bad. Okay, it needs to be an even weighting, or as close as you can. Okay, and then finally, at the end, you should have an opinion on it, okay, based on what you learned about the toxin, what are your feelings on it, should it be banned, should there be greater restrictions on its use, disposal, et cetera, okay. Everybody clear on what's gonna be expected for the project itself? Okay, now, a couple of things. First off, plagiarism, 
You guys heard that word before? Okay, plagiarism is bad, okay? It's stealing. It's the stealing of ideas, not of material, okay? And you can't do it, okay? For a couple of reasons. It's illegal, and you don't learn anything by doing it, all right? So, make sure that your project is your wording, okay? It's okay if you get information from other websites, but the wording needs to be yours. That means you can't copy and paste from somebody else's website, okay? You must put it in your own words. It must be phrased your own way. Okay, one of the things I do with this assignment is I put on the plagiarism checker. Okay, which is Google's little tool that works amazing. Okay, it catches plagiarism every single time. Okay, and it, it not only tells me what percentage of your report is plagiarized, it'll tell me what you plagiarized it from, and it'll have links to the pages you took it from. It's awesome. Okay, so make sure that you are not copying and pasting other people's stuff. Okay? Now, you are obviously going to use information from other websites. So, you have to reference those sites. Okay? That means you're going to have a references cited or a bibliography at the end of your report where you will tell me where you got your information. That has to be in a certain acceptable format. That format looks like this. Okay? So, the first thing you have is the author's name. Sometimes you have to go looking for that, okay? It may not be directly there. Sometimes you even have to hit the contact us button and just ask. Lots of times you'll get a response that says, here are the references, okay? But you need to go through and find the author's name. If you absolutely cannot, then you can write author unknown. But if every one of your things has author unknown, then I'm gonna go, you didn't try hard enough, okay? So, try and find the author's name. Then, the date the article was posted. Please find something newer than this. Okay, because this is 1995. It's very old, okay? So, uh, the name of the author is Anne McElroy, so last name first, okay? Then the date it was posted, October 28th, 1995. Then, the name of the article, okay? Whatever it is you're, you're reading, and then the name of the website. And then, the URL. Okay, so www.ipromiseimnotcopyingthisstuffmrcoderre.com. Okay, and then lastly, the day you accessed it. So that would be September 20th, 2022, if you're looking at it today. Okay, those are the pieces of information that need to be in there, and you should have a minimum of five references. Okay, please make sure that your bibliography is in that format. Your bibliography is five marks out of 25. And inevitably, what some people do is they just put in five URLs for their references cited. How many marks out of five are you going to get for that? If I'm feeling generous, one. Okay, this is the form. Okay, you must have this information. If you write five URLs, those URLs might as well be. I willingly accept zero out of five, mrcoderre.com. I know Mr. Coderre told me not to do this, but I did it anyway, dot com, okay? I don't care what my mark is, dot com. That's what your URLs might as well be if that's all you put down, because all you're gonna get is nothing, okay? Make sure you find this information and cite it in this way, okay? All right, another section of your report, worth five marks out of 25, is your planning. This is the easiest five marks ever, okay? All I'm looking for for planning is either a thought web or an outline, okay? So you can choose between those, whichever way makes more sense to you, okay? So you can have a thought web with nicotine in the middle and then bubbles coming out of it, okay? Or you can have an outline that says paragraph one, talk about uh, what nicotine is, paragraph two, talk about this, you know, or like that, whichever way works best for you. So you have to have one or the other of those and a timeline. So everybody has to have a timeline that just says September 20th, started research. September 21st, research in class again. Uh, September 25th, uh, worked on introductory paragraphs. September 30th, uh, finished up the body of the report, whatever. Just tell me when you worked on it, okay? Or when you plan to work on it, okay? If at the end of this whole thing, you put it together the night before, shame on you, but just write that, okay? I mean, 
if you wait till the night before, then right, October 4th, I slammed this out like really, really fast on the night before because I don't manage my time very well. You don't have to write that other part, but okay, just tell me when you're working. Okay, that's five marks. A timeline and some sort of planning page. Okay, it doesn't have to be much. This is an easy five marks, so remember to do it. Okay, it's five easy marks for a thought web and a timeline. All right. Um, so you'll get five marks for your initiating planning, so that's your thought web and timeline. Five marks for your analysis and interpretation, so that's me reading through your stuff. Does it make sense? Is it accurate? Okay, did you come to some good conclusions, etc.? Your communication. When I read your report, did it sound like a 15-year-old person who speaks English wrote it? Okay, because if it sounds like a five-year-old wrote it, that's going to be a problem. Okay, or if it's one long sentence. Don't laugh, I've seen it. I actually had a person submit a report to me that had a capital at the beginning and a period at the end and no other punctuation. It was the strangest thing ever. You don't realize just how much you depend on punctuation to make things make sense, okay? Until you read a 825 word sentence, okay? really weird, all right? Spelling mistakes. If I open this project up and it looks like it's bleeding because the spell checker has underlined everything, that screams, I'm so lazy, I didn't even click the button that fixes this for me, okay? Like that is not the impression you want me to have when I'm going over your report. Use the spell checker, use the grammar checker, okay? It's a click of a button. So do that, okay? That's your communication. If your report is like point form, that doesn't flow very well. That makes it hard to follow, okay? So try and have some kind of segue between your slides or your transmit between your paragraphs or something, okay? Research and investigation, so that's a bibliography, that's five references cited like this, five marks, okay? And then overall, okay, when I look at it, are there some visual aids, okay? Are, is there good grammar? Is there something that really keeps me you know, reading this besides the fact that I have to mark it, okay? Is it interesting? Does it draw my attention, okay? That's the kind of stuff that goes into overall, okay? If it's a slides presentation that's a white background and black lettering, and it's like, that's all, and there's no pictures and nothing, I'm gonna get really bored, okay? That doesn't make a good overall impression, all right? Here's another thing that people do. When you set up, if you're doing a slides, make sure your color scheme makes it so I can read it. I've had some of these where I had to take Tylenol in the middle, okay? Because the, the font color and the background color like went, and it was just, it gave me a headache, okay? Where it was hard to read or some of their text just disappeared because it was exactly the same color as the background, okay? Like, be mindful of where you put everything so that I can read it. That's part of the overall presentation, okay? Does that make sense? So that's out of 25 marks, those are your five categories. What's included in the 800 to Okay, so this must be 800 to 1,000 words. That's your bare minimum, okay? Like, don't expect that you're probably going to get 100% at that at 800 words. It's hard to cover everything well in 800 words. That's kind of your bare minimum. And that is just your written part, okay? That's not the planning, and it's not the references, okay? So the 800 words is your actual words, okay, what you produced and wrote, okay? Now, I would say to do a good job of this, you probably need 1,200 to 1,500 words, okay? That's a page to a page and a half in the defaults for Google Docs, okay? So that's like 11 point font, one inch margins, time in New Roman or whatever it defaults to, okay? That's about how long 1,200 to 1,500 words is, okay? 2,000 words, yeah, you're probably doing an excellent job, okay? But you could probably still get 100% in 1,500 to, you know, 1,200 to 1,500. 5,000, I don't know that I have time to read that much, okay? That's becoming like thesis level, okay? And, and I don't think you need that much, okay? So kind of keep it in there. All at the end, okay. yes. yeah, yeah. Put your references in a bibliography at the end, yeah. Okay, any other questions there? All right, if more come up, let me know. You have the rest of class today to work on this, all of class tomorrow to work on this. That will be the only class time you get, okay? Thursday, we have our first school-wide mass. 
Okay, um, so there probably won't be a quiz Thursday. Okay, we'll talk about mass expectations tomorrow. For now, you can get to work. <laughs>